Now we can stack unlimited smart telescope images in Cyril, whether you're doing a mosaic or not. Today I'll cover some of the most important updates I've made to the Nastronomy Smart Telescope Preprocessing script in Cyril. The main update will affect mostly Windows users, but I've made updates that'll affect pretty much everyone. Let's talk about the big update first, which is automatic batching. Up until now, Windows users had a limit of 2048 files if they wanted to stack anything. And up until smart telescopes became a thing, very few people had to worry about stacking more than 2,000 files. But now people have thousands and thousands of frames and we, we want to be able to stack those. Now if you didn't do a mosaic, the trick is to convert everything into what's called a fit sequence file and you can process that as you normally would. But if you were to do a mosaic, it doesn't work because the fit sequence file cannot handle plate solve information. So that fails. The workaround there is to batch it yourself, split up the files into different batches, do those batches separately and then stack the stacks. And that's basically what my script is currently going to do. It's going to automatically detect how many files you have. It's going to batch them into sizes of 2000. So I did 2000 instead of 2048 to give the script a little bit of buffer space just in case you know we do 2048 and something else happens and something else breaks. So this script now will stack those batches and then at the end it'll stack the stack. At the end, there is no drizzling, there is no rejection. It feathers a little bit to get rid of edge artifacts, then it just stacks them together. And it, so far during testing, it's worked beautifully. If you're using a Mac or Linux where you don't have the limitation, the batching will not happen. Your script will work as it normally does. The second update is that now the script can handle Dwarf 2 and Celestron Origin images. I was told that recently both of those scopes had a firmware update that now gives me the data I need in order for the script to do the processing. I don't know if this data will work or if the script will work with older images from the Dwarf 2 and Celestron Origin, but if you have those and you want to give it a shot, give it a shot. Maybe it'll work now. But I don't have either of those scopes. I relied on submitted images from members of my Discord server, so thanks to everyone who's provided those, and I was able to get those to work. The third update is that this actually removes autocrop. So autocrop was written by another author. He created autocrop.py named Gottfried, and Several people had reported issues with the autocrop, even if they weren't using it, if it was just in the script, it was just, they were getting weird errors that I couldn't replicate. And as soon as I send them a version without autocrop, it just magically worked. And I've also got a lot of feedback where people say that they wouldn't use autocrop in this kind of a script because they want to do the framing and cropping themselves, which is totally fair. So in order for me to not try and figure out what was happening, I got rid of autocrop for this version. If you disagree, if you have strong opinions in either direction, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Next update is for people with low resolution monitors. Uh, some of you have reported that you can not see the buttons at the bottom. So I made it here so that you can click and drag the edges of the script and you can expand it any way you please. So that should help you out. And the last update that I made to the script is that a lot of you reported that if you run the script more than once, it'll always crash Cyril on the second run. And I was able to figure out what was happening. So I fixed that in a patch. So that should be fixed moving forward. And before I get to the full demo of everything, I just want to mention that if you want to support me and my work on this channel, consider becoming a patron on Patreon. There is also a free tier available, and I've been trying to make content available for all tiers, including ad-free uploads of my videos to paid members. I also recently completed my Buy Me A Coffee profile, so if you want to support me in that with that platform, that's also available as well. Both links are in the description below. Let's get to the demo. All right, this demo is taking place on Serial 1.4.0 Beta 3, but this was also tested in Beta 2, so if you haven't updated yet. And if you don't have my pre-processing script, you want to go to Menu, Get Scripts, and on this list here, on this, drop, uh, this list of processing scripts, if you go down to Pre-processing, you'll see an Astronomy Smart Telescope pp.py. Just make sure that's selected and click on apply. It'll download it for you. If you've recently switched from beta 2 to beta 3 and some scripts aren't working or my script isn't working, I would recommend also clicking on the reset Python venv. Don't click on the reset. It'll reset all of your preferences. Just click on the reset Python venv, which will redo the virtual environment that the Cyril Python environment is set up in and then restart Cyril. Uh, sometimes you don't need to restart Cyril, but restart Cyril. And another thing I can recommend is if you go to your app data local Cyril directory, there is a VENV file. So after you reset VENV, close Cyril and come in here and delete this folder. Sometimes I found that when you do reset VENV, it doesn't get deleted because, or it doesn't get reset because something is open and it just can't delete it because of permissions issues. Just make sure to do that. And I found that that fixes a lot of 
issues that people have been having when they switch from beta 2 to beta 3. So once you have this, you click on apply and it will download the script for you. And you'll find it under scripts, Python scripts, pre-processing, and you'll find the Nastronomy Smart Telescope PPY. So you click on this. If you have the warning enabled, you'll get this. Just click on run script. The first time you run it, it may take a little while because it's going to download all the dependencies, but it'll eventually show up and you'll see it working here. And it'll say something like, this script is compatible with this version of Cyril. So once we have this here, the current version is version 1.1.0. And if you've used my previous versions of the script, you'll notice that the 2048 plus mode is no longer here. And aside from that, the other obvious change is when you click on the telescope drop-down menu, you also have Dwarf 2 and Celestron Origin. The telescope list is ordered in the sequence that I added them to the script, so they're not like in alphabetical order. So it looks a little bit weird, but this is just a way of saying that Dwarf 2 and Origin came later, but also they're less supported because I don't have the Dwarf 2 or the Origin, so I did all of my testing using data that people provided through my Discord server. So for my testing here, I'm going to be using Celestron or Seastar S30. And once you change this, the telescope, it'll tell you exactly what you chose in the logs. There are some updated logs here. If you have calibration frames, check these. If you don't, don't check them. Otherwise, you will get an error. I, In a future patch, I will make sure that you can't select them if there is if these directories don't exist. And then there's cleanup files. So if I hover over it, you'll see the note here. It says if your session is batched, so if you have more than 2,000 frames and this script needs to batch them, it'll automatically clean up those files because I'm reusing the process directory over and over again. And I don't want there to be to be any kind of collision, so it gets cleaned up automatically. So if you have just a single batch, you know, less than 2,000 files, you can click this, it'll delete them. Otherwise, if you have more than 2,000, whether you click it or not, the files will get cleaned up whether you want them or not. I will, of course, take feedback. If you feel that they shouldn't be, if you feel differently, let me know in the comments below. A background extraction, registration with Drizzle, and stacking Feather, they're all still the same. Nothing there has changed. The only thing is that when we're batching, the Feather will automatically get applied whether you click it on or not it's because I noticed that when we're stacking stacks the edges tend to have a little bit more artifacts when you feather that actually blends them in really nicely so it feathers automatically uh, if you have feedback on that let me know for the post stacking you'll see that auto crop has been removed due to people saying that they have been having issues while it was there while my older versions of the scripts weren't working so I removed that but SPCC works exactly the same the only thing is if we switch to like dwarf 2 I don't really know what filters they have. I know they have just a generic, uh, not the Astro filter, I don't know what they call it, but I'm leaving it as UV IR filter. And same with the origin. There's no filter, it's just broadband if you just want to use that. But if you have information on the types of filters and their band passes, let me know. I can add that in a future patch. If you click on the help, you'll also get some useful information here. I try to be as helpful as possible, but as the last option is something you should pay attention to. When you're asking for help, please have the logs handy. So the logs are this thing here. You, you also get a console that opens up when you open Cyril. Sending me a screenshot of this is okay, but it's not gonna help me. So this is what I need. So if I click on okay, it does output the help text here. So you can you can you have the information here. You can also copy and paste the links here if you want to join the Discord server or check out my YouTube. But what you want to do is you can click on this little download button here. It says export the log and it'll export a TXT file that you can then send me. Usually on my Discord, that's where that's my preferred method, especially because other people there are also used to this and they can help you as well. And another change here is that I've had people say that they had issues with the buttons not appearing in the bottom. So I've made it so that you can collapse and expand this window as much as you want. Just hover your mouse over the, the edge of the window and you can, you can expand it. So if the buttons don't appear, if you have a small resolution screen, just you can expand it and you should be able to access it. So I'll just close this. The other thing I'll mention is that, so that ran because I have a lights directory inside my serial batching script or my batching test directory here but if I was some in batching this is still working where you know if I try to turn this on it gives me a warning says you're currently in the light circuit do you want to select the parent directory that's still the same it opened in another window and there we go so let's look at my files see so my files here in my serial batching test I have a whole I have 3144 items here so you'll notice that a bunch of these say copy copy to etc and that's because I don't have any sessions that have more than like 1600 frames and the one with 1600 frames looks really bad 
So I actually just made copies of my IC1848 picture, which is the Soul Nebula, just a couple times to get to 3,000 files. Now all the duplicates will get averaged out anyway, so they won't overlap. So this isn't this isn't the best test to like get data out because I'm stacking the same data over and over again. But this is just to show you that with 3,000 files, I can run this. Going back to the script, again, it's going to batch. I don't have to click on cleanup files, but I'll do it anyway. You could do background extraction. It'll do them all one by one. You can do drizzle. I will say that drizzle, the bug still exists where it will occasionally create black frames, and I'm scanning for those. There is somebody, who, a couple of people who recommended I do threading to speed that up. I've tried doing that. I've run into some issues, so I've removed that from this release, but I'll have that probably working in a future version. But hopefully this will be fixed in serial at some point and we won't need the black frames checker at all. But for now, if you use Drizzle, just know that it'll take a little bit longer, especially if you have, have 3,000 files. If you do two Drizzle of two or more, that's going to take a really long time. So just be prepared, especially if you don't have a lot of space. And for this demo, I will Drizzle just to show you. And we will also keep an eye on our disk space here. So this is a four terabyte drive, but I have 278 gigs remaining. It's more than enough for what I want to do here. And the first thing that's going to happen is when I click run, so I'll click run. So in serial here, we'll see, we see that it detected 3,144 files and it's splitting into two batches. So it'll be a batch of 2,000 and a batch of 1,144. And what's happening now is that it's actually, if you look at my directory here, it's actually splitting those up into two different subdirectories. So it's actually copying them. I thought about doing sim links. I had some trouble with it, but maybe I'll figure that out later on. So keeping an eye on our space, you'll see that the space has decreased from 275 to 267. It's because it basically copied those files and put them into these directories and split them up. So this is still copying. So depending on your drive, how much, how quickly Python is running, it could take a few seconds. Or, But there we go. It copied everything over. I have 1144 files in the process directory open and these are sim links so this is okay but when we start plate solving they'll get overwritten with real links and it'll it start start to do those things and we can see our disk space going down and there you go it's doing its thing it's working on the first batch you can see the disk space going lower and lower the memory usage is getting higher and higher and settling in some places so let this go and we'll chat at the next stopping point Alrighty, so it completed the first batch, and now it's converting the remaining 1,144 files for the second batch. And if you look at our disk space, I'm back up to 265 gigs because it got rid of all of the intermediary files in here. So if I, yes, you can see I only have the batch lights two here, and no longer the batch lights one. And if I go back here, we'll see that there's a file here. We have 1,961 files that were stacked, so it rejected 39 files for whatever reason. And so this is one of the one of the images. So this is the first batch image. So we it was drizzled one X, that's in the name as well. And now it's batching the second light. So we will go back here and we will I saw minimize that and we can see the batch lights too happening. It'll be much faster since it's almost half the files. So we'll take a look at the display going down and then going right back up. Right now that finished the batch two, now it's doing the final stack. And this is super quick, it's just stacking two frames. Now if you look at my working directory, we have three files now. We have batch lights two, batch lights one, and now batched, which is the final batch file. And you can see that the process directory just has the final results, everything else has been deleted. And now I'm back to 277 gigs of space. I don't remember what's my starting point, but I feel like I have more space than I did. So now if I do an auto stretch, we can see that this is what my data looks like. It looks pretty nice. You know, and the next steps would be to crop and then do stuff. But I'm not going to go through that here. I also want to quickly, very quickly go over how to how this will work if you don't have to batch. So I'm just going to go back to my sessions here and I have my mosaic directory here. And in this directory, I have my M31 files. So I'm going to click on scripts, Python scripts, pre-processing run script here it's going to be s30 and i want to show you just how quickly this can go if you just turn this on you know you clean up files and you don't do anything else no other pre-processing steps you don't want to drizzle you don't want to do spcc nothing else if you just let this go it'll go super quick i'll click on run and again if you need help click on this download button here to export the logs and save the file and send it to me probably on discord if you want to get 
a quick reply. If you use the script, I would love to hear from you and get your feedback. The best way to ask for help with the script is through Discord, but if you're a member of Patreon, you can also direct message me there and I'd love to help you there. I believe direct messaging is only available for paid members, so just FYI. You can also ask in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you. And if you found this script helpful or if this video was helpful, hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I am working on other scripts which I hope to introduce to you all soon. Thank you for watching and until next time, cheers guys. Thank you.